I understand I'm a tad bit late here. This might not even be relevant anymore, but uh, finally doing it. Finally going to wrap up my reading of 2019, and we're going to start with the worst books. Introduction is these are not all just 2019 releases. I don't think there's like one 2019 release. These also aren't just like the lowest rated on my Goodreads or anything like that. This is mostly like books that were just super disappointing that I expected more from that I wanted to love. Books that were upsetting and awful and offensive or affected me in some way very negatively. Like there, I read a lot of Stephen King's short stories in last year that were like one star. They're not on here because I don't care about them. I wasn't expecting anything from them. They took like two hours tops to read. Didn't do anything to me. I don't. I don't even think about them anymore. They're not in here. Books like Persuasion by Jane Austen. I was like a two star read. It's not on here because I do didn't think I was gonna love it. I didn't care. It was exactly what I thought it was gonna be. So some of these aren't even like one star some of these are like three stars you know it's just that they i wanted them to be five stars or something it's just we're gonna get into it i'm gonna start with this is kind of an epic love story by karen calendar this is queer poc rep written from a queer poc author this was a debut i believe this came out in 2018 and i had picked it up at the beginning of the year not even expecting i was gonna love it or anything that's gonna be like a new favorite queer story but it was very disappointing to me. One, because queer POC are off the bat. There were so many different identities in here and races. And um, the love interest is um, hard of hearing deaf. There was just so much representation in here. And I was like, I, I need this. And here's the thing. One of my favorite tropes of all time is childhood friends to lovers. Especially if like, there's a weird falling out or something. Just any of that. That's my shit. This was that. And it didn't do it well. On my issues with this the storyline the plot you would expect like okay so basically childhood best friends there's a weird falling out one of them moves away and then all of a sudden he comes back into his life and then it i assumed it was going to be them talking about what had happened getting over this thing that affected their friendship and then they fall in love or whatever no it was right off the bat like oh my god yeah you're from my childhood i remember you now let's fucking make out Oh yeah, then we're going to mention what had happened. Like, there was no, like, climax. It was anticlimactic. Nothing happened. Um, I hated how the characters, they were, like, juniors. They read, like, 13-year-olds. They were terrible. They were so fucking annoying. And then my biggest one is a whole lot of cheating. So much cheating. Low-key cheating. I don't... And it was, a lot of it was glossed over. A lot of it they tried to justify it. I'm not about that. Which, again, I could throw something else in here that got, like, the same rating as this that has that. Sadly, another queer book, um, It's Not Like It's a Secret by Misa Sugira. Um, they kind of go hand in hand because one of the reasons why I hated this was I didn't like a lot of the characters and stuff. But there's a big, big cheating. And a lot of queer books, for some reason, do that. I don't know why that's part of it. And I just... Cheating in any kind of circumstance is just not okay at all to me i don't care and i hate that that's such a big prominent thing in queer storylines and it may it just it it paints us in a bad light and i'm not i'm not okay with that the reason why like i wouldn't put this in the worst ever list is because i wasn't expecting much from this one i was expecting a lot more from this especially because i knew more about it i just wanted it to be more i wanted to love it that was whatever next we're going to talk about just like another random little disappointing one i don't have a lot now that I'm thinking, I didn't read a lot this year, that's probably why. But um, We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, I did not hate this. This was a 3.5. I thought this was a great exploration of friendship and family and losing people in your life and how they become literal ghosts, but then how when someone leaves your life and they're still alive, they can still kind of be a ghost. And just, it was kind of, again, like a weird friendship to love or esque, but it doesn't was ever established and stuff. The only reason I'm putting this in here is because I had read Nina Lahore's other novel, Everything Leads to You. One of my favorite queer books, one of my favorite female female romance books. I adore that so fucking much. And this just wasn't it for me. I I was expecting a lot from it because I loved what I had previously read by her. And it just wasn't like anything spectacular i just i didn't like the pacing i didn't like some of the characters and how certain things happened i don't know i just didn't 
love it and I really wanted to love it. So next we're going to talk about the really offensive, awful, horrible books, like the terrible books. And then we're going to, number one is going to be my most disappointing one, which isn't even my lowest rated, but Cock on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. Kate, if you watch this, I swear, I promise I'm going to try not to have Murakami in my worst books of the year shit. Just wait, wait for my favorite books. Wait for my favorite books. Um, so... <laughs> This I had read, I was reading more um, Mirakami because it's one that's Kate's favorite author, but all, she hosted a just on here on YouTube and other platforms and I got to be a co-host. Picked up this one just because it sounded intriguing and I think someone did say that there was a queer character in here and we that and the rated on was in June, Pride one, so want to get as much queer as I could. That's my issue here. So one, can't tell you the plot of this. I mean, I know what happened, but like I can't word. So... He, my issue with this is Kami does a lot of just write about mundane shit and boring shit and the little details and sometimes I love it. Sometimes that just is my favorite part of stories. I didn't love it in here. It kind of just detached me from the story and these characters. I didn't really care about it. I didn't think there was much of a resolution. This isn't the most fantastical and I feel like it could have been more fantastical and I would have liked it more. I did not like most of the characters. I don't think any of them were redeemable. No one learned anything. The plot itself, the, all the little like subdivisions, I didn't like it. I just didn't care for it. It was hard to get through because I just didn't care. But um, the main, main reason it is on here is because there is one character. What the fuck is their name? The character is Oshima and oh boy. This character, my interpretation here, my own personal, I don't, I didn't even bother looking up other shit about this or what other people said. I know people tried to come for me and say shit about it. And I was like, I don't give a shit. It offended me as a queer person. So, Oshima read to me as an intersex transgender male. And that would have been super dope if it was explained, explored, discussed a lot better. But I feel like this character was bred from a place of ignorance, whether Mirakami meant for it to be like that or meant for it to not be read like that, that's where it came from to me. And so Oshima presents very masculine and gets called like, he him pronoun on the stuff. And then all of a sudden there's this moment where it is revealed, they reveal themselves that they were born female and all stuff. And they refer to themselves as a gay woman and all. there's so many things. And like when they're talking about certain stuff, I go, that read intersex. So are they female? Is that what they want to be known as, seen as? But then it it was this wish wash between all of the characters and even Oshima themselves with the he him to see her and all this stuff and calling themselves a woman and gay and like it was just a mess and it was the way that other characters talked about them and the switching between things and the way that once they had said that they were born a certain way and then they were trying to explain that the way that the other characters still just couldn't get it. Like, I couldn't get it, obviously. It was very confusing, obviously. But the way that they just kept... It was the flip-flop. And then even their brother at the end. Brother, sister, oh, no. And I was like, that's... It just was so offensive to read as somebody who is not cisgendered. And harmful, even, a little bit. Like, it was low-key, like, triggering to me just to, like, hear that and to see that. And I was like, no. Editing Finn here just to say that I also think that it was really harmful because if other people who don't really understand transgender or intersex or any kind of like queer like that, especially, you know, um, this was written in Japanese in Japan and all that stuff, I feel like they can get the wrong idea and then like they just don't understand and everyone just becomes ignorant of okay, things. I think I give this like a generous like two, three stars. I mean, that just really just fucked me up, man. I don't know. But, like, the thing is, this his writing's so good. And there was, like, this other, like, backstory thing that was going on that was so intriguing. And, like, there's so many lines in here and things that were just so beautiful and I loved. So it's obviously not, like, I hate Mirakami. I, spoiler alert for my favorite books of the year, you might see him come up again. Who knows? But, like, dude, that shit fucked me up. Now, perhaps the most infuriating, offensive, harmful book of the year which sadly i have one here's keepers by stephen king remember when i mentioned stephen king earlier and i was like whatever because uh this one's coming up here read a lot of stephen king gotta throw one under the bus just at the end that's just what he deserves um this is the second book 
of the Miss Mercedes or Bill Hodges trilogy, like a detective mystery. Fuck if I know, really, at this point. This was the second book. Okay, my last video was my last wrap-up of the final books I read at the end of 2019. I ripped this shit to shreds. I'm sorry if this is repetitive. If you watch that and then you hear me here, sorry. But fuck, oh my god, was this awful. Start here. This is the second book in a trilogy. It was a filler. It was it it fell into that second book trope, whatever the fuck it is. Um, this storyline though would have been amazing. Amazing. It had nothing to do for the majority of it with the first and third book and like those characters in that storyline. And I would have loved it was about this man who like robs and murders an old recluse author because he didn't like the way that he ended like a series and then he finds his old journals where he continued it like in the way that like he had wanted it to and he just wanted to read it and like explore that or whatever and then he had to have to go to prison because like he's an awful terrible human being and then like so many years later a child finds these journals and it's just like that whole thing and then later on the fucking detective and all those characters from first and third come in here or whatever. Oh my god. Aside from aside from the the usual homophobia and racism in every Stephen King ever it's it's just it's just how he writes apparently it's how who he is as a person um who it was it was like that times a hundred because um the man's in prison and what do they talk about um trigger warning strong language um sexual assault rape I'm gonna put that right here um so the man is like really like tiny scrawny pretty boy and shit so he of course, of course, because this happened in every. I'm not saying it doesn't happen in prisons. My father actually works in a prison, and like, have I heard any of this? No, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But also, Stephen King, when were you in prison? He really should be though for some of this shit he says. You know, with my world, whatever. Um, of course, he has to get but raped the way it's said, and it's constantly and constantly and constantly just said over and over again. Like, did you know he's in prison and that um, men are penetrating him? Oh, hold on. Men are penetrating him. Like, it's just, why are you, like, keeping this going? What the fuck was the point of that? Like, you could have said it and been done or said that, like, it, like, I don't understand. Now, that same man winds up in prison. I don't know if, I don't feel like he was in prison twice for some reason, but, like, maybe he wasn't. I mean, I don't know. He's in prison because he sexually assaults or rapes a woman. And so he's in prison, all this shit's happening to him. And every time he has to go for his hearing or trial or whatever, I don't actually know legal talk. I'm not a lawyer. Um, and, and he has to go in front of the judge to see if like he'll get out or whatever the fuck's going to happen. But every time he has to go, the woman who he sexually assaulted comes and testifies and says that she is not over it. She gets traumatized. She can't have normal relationships. And every single time, like every hearing, it's something different. And you see the way it's affected her so negatively and the entire time everyone including that character is talking so much shit about her saying what a fucking bitch that she won't let you go wow get over it blah 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 and like i get it they're prisoners they're not supposed to be like good people i'm not saying all prisoners are terrible human beings because they're not there's a lot of i'm going into so many different things here who oh boy you're not supposed to like the main character i already didn't like him based off of prior to this but like the way he talked about her and he's like i everyone loves me in here i'm so well behaved they just let me go blah 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 fuck you you fucking bitch for not let, being over the fact that i raped you get over yourself and shit like I get, okay 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 sure they're horrible people horrible people are gonna think that that their actions can't negatively affect another person because their life is so hard already because of that so they uh, like whatever but later on that woman dies and she writes a letter to the judge and that man saying how sorry she is how awful she was for not getting over it for never letting him off the hook for showing up and not letting him out get out of prison because wow who wants their rapist just out and about you know like it's just and I think he even still is, like, an asshole. Like, after that happens, he's like, it's about time, you fucking bitch, blah, 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 like, whatever. And it's just the fact that Stephen King, a male, wrote a 
female character apologizing to her rapist for not being over the fact that he sexually assaulted her. <laughs> do I, I do, I can't even express with words. I shouldn't have to. Do you, do you, if you don't see where that's one million percent fucked up, get out of here. Just what the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? Jimmy King? He could have been like, she died. Hey, dude, you know what? You're on good behavior. You're doing chill. We can put you out on probation, you know? But no, he had to write this female character apologizing, which added nothing. Like, okay, like him saying shit and like talking shit about that woman or whatever. I get it. it makes him seem like an even worse character because you're not supposed to like him. Whatever. That didn't add anything. What the fuck was that? Like, to this day, I get so angry thinking about this. Like, ooh. Um, okay, moving off from that, the last book I want to talk about, sadly, sadly, it's not, this was the lowest rated. This got a three stars. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold it up. No one say anything. <laughs> it pains me to have this in here. So backstory, in case you didn't know, Carry On is like my favorite book of all time. Just everything about it makes me so warm and happy. Simon and Baz, my little gay sons. I just, I adore everything about that story and the world and the characters. This was the sequel that didn't need to happen. I, to this day, will say that that's a standalone. Carry On is a standalone. No reason to add more, but I understand why. And I was excited that she was adding more only because I wanted more canon, Simon, and Baz because I love them so much. This basically, I feel like everybody knows the plot. Road trip across America, yada yada, lots of vampires, lots of magic. Their relationship's kind of like freaking not doing too well. That was one issue that I had with this. Like, like I get it. Not all of these are perfect, but how dare you? It that freaking carry on ended perfectly. A beautiful relationship. We didn't. I didn't need you t to destroy that. Not that they like break up or anything in here or whatever. Um, this is only in here because of the fact that carry on's my favorite book, and I wanted to love the sequel. I just it didn't do it for me. Just I think it's a lot because it wasn't necessary. It wasn't like I didn't like it. It was a little difficult to get through the scenes where Simon and Baz just can't fucking communicate. And and there's like a lot of moments in here that I loved and I adored and shit. Like, this is very tabbed up, you know? But like, I didn't love it. But funnily enough, we're going to end this by exposing myself. So I have two copies of Carry On. My original, original US hardcover and then when the paperback with all the pretty fan art came out in US and all that shit. So then this had a lot more additions, like, off the bat. So I have this one, the, the just OG one, really nice and pretty, the one that came out in the U.S., just standard whatever one. <laughs> Recently was at um, Barnes & Noble and I saw this. Okay, listen, it was also on sale, so I kind of justified it, even though I didn't love it, but I also do have two editions to carry on, and I just had to. The Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. Look at how, okay, I prefer this one so much to this one these colors oh my god the night sky this dark like navy midnight blue is so fucking beautiful and also the fucking fan art the fucking look at him in his fucking rose fucking thing and then like oh it's so beautiful <laughs> it's so beautiful like come on come on like how how could i pass it up it goes with my collection even if it's not the best but, like, I can reread this edition um, when the, because there's going to be a third one, of course, before that one comes out, like I did with my other edition, Carry On, and tab this one up. All right, y'all, so that is the end of my worst books of 2019. Had some middling, had some horrible, just all over the board, guys. 2019 wasn't the best reading year. These were the shittiest of the shit, dude. Whatever, I don't know what I'm saying, but, uh. Thanks for being here, and I'll do my favorite book some point, maybe.